Well, from Los Angeles, California, (laughs) we're the Mad Scientist Party Hour. I took it easy on him. Oh, hello there, friends! Welcome back to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name's Kevin Kraft, joined once again by a man who has slashed his pants and underwears to ribbons and is now terrorizing a small suburban neighborhood with his very sharp boner. That's (laughs) Jeff Clark. It's my spooky season erection and transmitting to us from the sewers beneath new york city the bearded booger eating chud known as shuddy boy go i might have to go commit murder i'll be right back all right well (laughs) sweet have fun keeping with the uh the halloween season tradition shuddy boy is about to go and slaughter somebody but in the meantime you think he's going mike vick or like a human might be going mike myers Oh, yeah. But joining us once again, our good friend, Seek Donnelly is back. Seek. Yo. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, yeah, wait. Yeah, that's a good song for me. <laughs> that was supposed to be a crowd cheering. <laughs> I don't know why I played uh, fucking Deliverance banjo music. Yeah, that's all right. That's the song I lost my virginity to, so that makes sense. We'll just we'll just hit you with one of these. <laughs> Nice. Well, hey, thanks for having me back. I'm sorry for all the tech issues uh, getting started. No, nah, no worries. That's what the it's Easter you... egg is for. Yeah, it's like it's not like I'm a, a YouTuber or anything, and I should know better. <laughs> <laughs> should have all that shit figured out. Hey, look, we've been doing MSPH. It'll be 12 years in December. Oh, and, congrats. Uh, still get these fucking technical issues popping up like whack-a-moles and... Sometimes they really chop our balls off. You've been doing this show since I had my aneurysm. I didn't even think about that before. 2010 was the year I had my aneurysm rupture. This show is almost old enough for R. Kelly to pee on. Hey, Shuddy's back. Sorry about that, guys. How'd your murdering go? I really am considering, you know, murder. I got home. Oh, you didn't murder? uh, About... He's considering 50 it. minutes ago at this point and immediately let the go- dogs out. Hmm. Uh, and then someone just shit in the house. The dogs or a human? Could have been a dog. No, one of the dogs. Out. One of no. the dogs. I Are you apologize. sure you didn't just get so high off one of your edibles that you shit on the floor and now you think that the dog did it? <laughs> I am positive I did not go in did the other room. Did you just go and, and shit? Have you <laughs> spoken with everyone who has a key to the house? <laughs> <It'll>, yeah. <laughs> Are you, have you it ruled is, out the ghost? Did yes, the ghost take a shit on the floor? One hundred percent, without a doubt, dog poop. Mm. Wow. Okay. Yeah, but you eat dog food sometimes when you're high, so that's not true at all. Uh, they have medicated dog food at the dispensary, and I really gonna, like it. I'm gonna send this shit to the lab. And... <laughs> nice and crunchy. Get it confirmed. Right. Some detective you are, Batman. It's all all circumstantial at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Well, since we are within a week of Halloween, I thought I would write a Halloween haiku. Spooky season haiku. I love it. Incorrect. It's a Halloween haiku. I like the alliteration. Yeah. So, if you guys wouldn't mind, I would like to share it with you. Can you do a spooky season sonnet? Ooh. Oh, I mean, Ooh, three S's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that can yeah, be trace S's. That could be, that could be uh, a Jeff assignment if you'd like. There you go. I, I don't really know what a sonnet is. I just, it all flows. <laughs> and all honestly, I, I don't think like I know either. It's a really long haiku, right? I think only like Shakespeare does sonnets because he's like really good at writing. What the fuck is a sonnet? Like, is that I like, also don't know what a sonnet is. Is so. that like Sonnet the Hedgehog? <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they have slushies there at Sonnet, right? <laughs> 14 lines using typically in English 10 syllables per line. Holy cow. Oh, so it is kind of haiku ish. Jeff, do you know what a okay. haiku is? Uh, It's like a Japanese like three line poem or like mantra. 
<laughs> Maybe four lines. Do you know? Do you know any more of the rules? It doesn't need to rhyme. But That's it's true. Cool if it does, yeah. <laughs> um, and it usually has something to do with uh, nature or mysticism. Hmm. Okay, I don't know anything else. <laughs> nature or mysticism. <laughs> All right. Well, I you was can playing with house money there. I got so far. No one it's was expecting guess. anymore. So I figured I'd <laughs> throw something else out there. All right. Well, you can you can be the judge on which category this this haiku falls into. Okay. Here we go. Jack o' lantern carved sucks my wang while on the john. A pumpkin blumpkin. Is that is that mysticism? That's I mean, it's definitely not natural. Uh, wait, pumpkins, pumpkins come from pumpkins, nature. Yeah, pumpkins do come from nature. And pooping is I nature. I would say it's more. I would say it's more mysticism. How many syllables did that have, Jeff? Oh my god! Oh, let me Google a syllable. <laughs> <laughs> um, he knew sonnet, but it's amazing. I don't know. I gotta have to. The syllables are like how words break down. I have to go back and listen to the whole fucking thing. Say it again, Kevin. Yeah, it it's it's okay. short. Read it line by line. Give him a chance to guess each line. Okay. Jack o' lantern carved. Okay. How many? How was many that? syllables? God, I'm gonna say five. Lan- that would lantern. be correct. Lanterns where I'm kind of fucked up. Okay, all right. Cool. All right Lantern okay. is two. You are yeah. correct. All right, here's the second line. Sucks my wang while on the john. Man, I'm so glad I remembered to hit record this time. <laughs> Sucks my wang while on the john. I'm going to go seven. All right. To bring it up, to bring the syllable total up to 12. I thought it was only supposed to be 10. You're violating the rules. No, no, nope, uh, nope. he's still within nope. the rules. He's still no, within the rules. All right. The third and final line, a pumpkin blumpkin. A pumpkin blumpkin. <laughs> Five. <laughs> I love the fact that you finally showed your work. That was because you were for everybody not watching the video. You did mouth every word. You did repeat did. everything verbally, yeah. and I used my hand <laughs> <to> silently. <count. laughs> but I like that on the last line you showed your work. I appreciate that. So, nice. based on the number of syllables that were in all three lines of Kevin's haiku, what is the rule for syllables in a haiku? First syllable is now math, you motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you gave me 17. I don't think it stops at 17, right? It's got to be uh, It's got to be under 20 syllables, for sure. No, it can't don't, be don't more add them than together. 17. Oh, really? 17 is the limit. Well, and strictly, the first line has to be five. Second line five, has to be seven. seven. Five, yeah. yeah, five, seven, five. I had five no chance. Rule. This guy has fucking been to Japan. Of course he gets this. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween themed white cheddar bone shaped poops. It's definitely the season to be busting out that old sound bite. Hell yeah. Did you know that like uh I haven't been able to find those um Cheetos Crunchos? Like I haven't seen them in the aisles in a very long time. They do have the Halloween themed bone shaped poofs or whatever you fucking said there. I have seen the bag of bones. I've seen the bag of bones in a tin that comes with three different kinds. Hmm. From Cheetos Ooh. or from another yes, company? From a, Cheetos. A poof tin. That rules. Dude, you remember <laughs> the, the poofs? <laughs> was it the Flame and Hot Cheetos mix ups? And then there was a cheesy. What were the two different mix up Cheeto mix up flavors? Because neither one of them exists anymore. It was where we got the jalapeno cheddar poof drop. I think that was. There were two salsa. different versions: the Cheetos Crunchos, and then a different version, which I can't remember. Cheetos, Cheetos salsa, Crunchos mix-ups. Cheetos it's Crunchos. It's flaming hot, and then the white cheddar bag of mm. bones. 
Cheetos Crunchos. <clears throat> okay, I'm on. Yeah, I'm on Google Images right now. There's a. Wow, that's dope, Shuddy. There's a cheesy salsa mix. The bag Wait. of bones. Hey, there's also Cheetos now has a Mexican street corn. I tried those. Did you? Yeah, a little underwhelming. Not very flavorful. The the price was prohibitive for me. Really? I don't want to spend five dollars on something that might be okay. Well, I I would jumped on that said, grenade for you, Shuddy Boy. Which you just said it wasn't. So yeah, I don't know if I'm. Just I mean, being I like, made the right decision. I could okay. be being a bitch. Maybe they're good. I think your brownie's like kicking them. in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had a rough day today. Or last 24, 26 hours have been pretty rough. Would you like to tell us about it in haiku form? No, not in haiku form. And definitely behind the Patreon paywall. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Well, we'll okay. save that. Are you mushroom stamp an intern or something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an intern. <laughs> sorry man i it's okay i busted out that haiku because for a while i've been wanting to write a book not necessarily <laughs> like you know i'm not out here trying to write the the fucking great american novel or some shit i want to write a, a like a comedy book like a humor book with multiple different things like i remember as a little kid when i'd be in the airport with my mom they had those those books you could buy that had an invisible ink pen. Do you guys ever remember those? And there was just like all these different things you could do. There was like a spot where you could, you know, draw your own thing. And then there were like word puzzles where you used the invisible ink to highlight the answers. That like all these different mishmash of, of word games you could play. Ugh! And I, I definitely don't want to incorporate invisible ink or anything into it, but I want it to be a multi-format, multi-tiered humor book. And, you know, I've been, obviously I've been taking my time with it. And back when I worked for Sirius and we were going into the office and stuff, I used to talk to Jude because Jude's written multiple books. And he was like, dude, if you ever had an idea, because, you know, you have an audience, Amazon has a thing where you just like, you write the text out, you upload mm -hmm. it, and Amazon just like, AI puts it into book form right. and you know, they probably keep a nice share of it, but it's, you don't have to worry about an inventory. You don't have to worry about finding a publisher. You can just self publish your own shit on Amazon and it, you know, costs you nothing. They just take their cut. Yeah. That's where my books are. I mean, that's how I do it. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've been, I've been writing little goofy haikus for years because awesome. I want to have like a nice haiku section. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Today I just felt like writing a uh, a Halloween themed haiku for the Puminati. There you go. You could do like a comedy haiku, like seasonal comedy haikus. So you can do some Christmas ones. Um, and, oh yeah. Uh, had that had that as a section in the book. I think that's a great idea, man. I wrote a couple other ones, but I figure this is the one that the Puminati would appreciate the most. There you go. So, Seek, it's been a while since we've seen you. How you been? In Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I miss California tremendously. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, you know, it's, there's a lot going on. Did the hurricane much, get you at all? Uh, no. Luckily, I mean, it came through, and but no, compared to, like, literal people dying and houses and stuff getting swept away, like, no, I have zero complaints. I think I lost power for an hour and I didn't even bitch about it. Like the lights went off and I was like, whatever. I was like, this is the lead. This is the least of the damage I've seen done. And an hour later it came back on. So now I got real lucky. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. How about you guys? I've been, I've been listening to the show, so I kind of know how you guys are doing and stuff, but, um, and I've been listening to the Patreon stuff as well, which is oh, awesome. dope. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. I, I, I keep missing the Saturday, like some of the wrestling stuff you guys do. Cause I'm always like, you know, at work and everything. Um, but yeah, it's like Alex is always texting me, Hey, they're going live. And I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Come, yeah. You've been I'm in a few, work. your, your avatar has been in a few of the matches. Yeah. 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 I know. I saw, I know. I, I think red rage and a couple other people, I remember some battles and stuff with. So yeah. 
I tell you what, man, those fucking MSPH wrestling Zoom parties yeah. get real grimy. <laughs> People yeah. doing fucking hard drugs, blacking out. <laughs> Oh man, awesome! <laughs> I like when you said that. The only one who reacted was Shuddy. Uh, <laughs> I have gotten wasted on some of that. I've done power hours and been yeah. Oh yeah, doing dabs left and right, and yeah, it's a it's a shit show. Certain nice. members on shrooming while they're on Zoom with everybody. It's it's a fucking it's a hell of a good time. Say their yeah. names. I don't respect their careers. Just say <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. What um? When's the last time it's? What's it been like? Was I on last year or was it this year that I've been on? I think it was last year. It might have been last year. Um, yeah. Like I, I guess like the 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 rolodex of shit that has gone. So basically, end of last year. Uh, for those who don't know, Echo passed away. Um, and uh, and. And unfortunately, that was like a domino of like a lot of bad things uh, that started happening after that. Um, I did rescue a new dog, Ace, who is sleeping under my desk right now, so you can't see him. Did you um, name him Ace? Or was that? Yeah, he he was named Rascal, and I just didn't like that name at all. Ace uh, is better. If it's good enough for yeah. Batman's dog, it's good enough for Seed's dog. <laughs> That's why I named him, because originally Echo was going to be called Crypto, and uh, but I went with Echo at the last second. So I was like, no, I'm sticking with the superhero names this time. Nice. So, uh, but um, Ace has cancer, so the chances ah. of him living very long are um, slim. I just didn't want him to die in that shelter. Uh, that place was like a shithole. Um, so I was like, I'll take him. You know, like I know I'm sure the people there are doing their best, but they had like 200 dogs there, and he had been there for a, a little over a year, and they were gonna probably send him to a kill shelter. So uh, ah. I just said I'll take him, and. Uh, I've actually probably just to keep him up to this point, probably spent about three and a half to four grand on him. Oh, um, just, uh, you know, medical stuff and everything. Um, and only one time, two times of those where I got help from a friend, uh, because things would come up last minute. Actually, we had an incident with ACE right when my, um, clutch went out on my car. <laughs> so Jesus. I had to spend 1200 dollars to fix the clutch or get a new clutch and then also take care of ace um but uh we're making the most of it he has a good life i spoil the shit out of him nice. and uh he's been the one good thing like is is having him around uh because uh because obviously i miss echo tremendously but um then other medical conditions for me started popping up nothing dire but some things that have kind of answered some questions that i've been experiencing the past couple of years actually so um, so what yeah, do you mean? just been one thing after another and I'm just trying to keep my head up and, you know, kind of laugh at it now at this point. Like what sort of, what sort of questions do you have that got answered? Um, so, um, I have, for years I've had, um, like little amnesia spells. Like I've like, like I don't, I'll jump from one place to the next. And we, th we originally was. I guess mis misdiagnosed where they thought I was having some form of early onset dementia. Then they thought maybe it could have just been from the, you know, damage done from the aneurysm, just kind of catching up to me. They didn't really know what was going on, but that was kind of like their best guess. It was all the contact uh, highs from when we were roommates. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, but uh, yeah, there would just be times where I'm like, I'm like, how did I, how did I get here? Like, what was I just doing? I don't remember what I was just doing. Um, so in February of this year, um, you know, it was like the two month anniversary of Echo's passing. Um, I was still not doing well, even though I had ACE, I was not doing well at all. And I actually try to take my own life. Um, Fuck. And, uh, and I made it through that obviously. Uh, but then like from that, I, uh, I was explaining like what was happening. I was like, yeah, I, I saw what I was doing, but I like, couldn't stop myself from doing it. And that triggered something. Cause obviously I saw, started seeing a shrink after that, um, or a therapist and they were, they knew my medical history and they were, you know, going through everything. And I said, well, it says here, you don't have visual memories. And I'm like, yeah, I don't. And they go, well, how can you, 
how can you have had the experience of watching yourself? Like you can't really create images in your head like that. So how is it that you think you saw something? And that led us down a rabbit hole of a conversation that essentially revealed um, uh, that I have a, a condition that they eventually labeled as OSDD1A, um, which is a, a form of disassociative identity disorder. Uh, so it's a, it looks like the amnesia spells I've been having for the past few years were literally my brain, my part of my brain checking out and another part of my brain checking in. Um, so if you've seen like Moon Knight, I guess is probably the most recent example of something like that. Uh, they found out I have a version of DID uh, and that I've, and then we found out that I actually was diagnosed with it as a kid. So um, just for Jeff's sake, what does DID stand for? Disassociative Identity Disorder. It's basically multiple personality. Um, oh, damn. And so, and it turns out we had something like this when I was a kid because I had, it's from what I hear, although I don't remember it, I had a really rough childhood at certain spots. And I guess I, I was diagnosed with a version of this when I was around 12 years old. Um, and then we may, we, we kind of thought maybe the aneurysm kind of cleared that away on some level, but now we're learning a whole bunch of other stuff that it kind of gets complicated, but. So that was going um, on when you and I were, were roommates. Yeah. 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 Um, so were there times where I was kicking it with your, your other personality? I have no idea. Um, well, so, so when they like other personality, so. No, no, I don't have like a version of me that thinks they're like a 10 year old boy or anything. You know, it's not like that extreme. It's just like, we're all different shades of me. Just so with like a different, um, I guess how we've been compartmentalized is uh, the way they said it makes sense to me was they're like, well, you're a big comic fan. So you probably broke yourself down into something that makes sense to you on that level because all of my um, parts are called uh they're they're different colors how so many are there blue. as of right now as far as we know because we're still doing this thing called mapping our system um there's four of us whoa um, yeah and there's so there's me and the thing is we so i have no memories before my brain aneurysm and we always just thought okay that was just a a reaction to the aneurysm but what it actually could be is the aneurysm happened and in order for my brain to survive uh, or my, or me to survive, I guess my brain dealt with it by creating another um, part. So it seems that has, that's me. So like the person you guys have known the last 12 years is um, was literally created 12 years ago by my brain um, to, to survive the brain aneurysm. And I guess a, a different part of me either didn't make it or we can't find them in our system right now or something else. Um, and then there's green, blue, and fade. And fade is like, um, fade, it seems. I bet is, that's uh, Jeff's, Jeff's favorite. <laughs> uh, can, yeah, I get, can I get fade faded is, um, with fade? Fade's a lot of our, um, he's nonverbal, apparently so far in therapy when we show, like he shows up, he doesn't speak. Uh, he doesn't really comprehend certain things. Um, well, hopefully there's he, no uh, like Tyler Durden thing going around where like blue takes over and starts a fight club or. Uh... Huh. Well, blue. So, so anyway, so while all this was happening, I was getting actually screwed over by my work. Um, I was up for a promotion and they, they passed me over on it, um, which was the second time they passed me over on the promotion. And that didn't help my situation. And uh, so what I ended up doing was um, quitting. I ended up quitting at my job. But I guess Blue was like, well, we need money. And we can't quit this job. So I guess he immediately apologized on our behalf after we had quit and said, I'll, I'll just keep my head down and work. And so he actually kept our job for us. And he's the one who goes to work now um, at my job. So, so I actually just check out for that time 
And then when he comes home, I'm, I'm back here at home. Like, I'm like, Oh, last time I was here, the sun was rising in the morning and now it's nighttime. So um, do you look at that as like a positive? Cause a lot of times going to work is stressful and undesirable and you get to just, you know, chill when it's leisure time or, you know, side job time. Cause I know you do, you got a lot of, you got a lot of fucking irons in the fire. You're doing a lot of yeah. creative content and stuff. Um, I'm still deciding, like still figuring a lot of this out. So yeah. I, I, at first to me, I just thought this was negative because I only, the only thing I knew about this was from movies. Yeah. And every, like you said, Tyler Durden earlier, like I only know this as a bad thing. Like I'm like, Oh, there's, there's a part of me that wants to hurt people or there's a part of me that, but so far that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, but with the exception of Fade, who doesn't really contribute much, um, the others are have specific positive goals. Um, so whereas like 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 Green is more of like a he's more of like a will, like a like a spine. So like if uh, if something needs to get done, he just does it. So recently we hurt our shoulder. Well, it was it was getting worse, and we didn't know why my shoulder was getting worse. And then once we learned that green does a lot of lifting stuff um, and, and like manual things. It turns out he was actually causing our shoulder to hurt more, but he has a different pain threshold apparently than we do. So it doesn't, the shoulder doesn't hurt him, but our shoulder was like, like doing really bad. <laughs> like it was a, uh, we were like t- uh, nerve was torn in the shoulder and we had, uh, damaged our rotator cuff, but he was acting like, like I'm sure the arm was stiff to him, but it didn't hurt him apparently, or at least that's what he says in our therapy sessions. So now, like when when you are at work, when and you get home, and Blue has clocked out for the yeah. time being, for lack of a better phrase, not to minimize it or anything. Yeah. Do you have recollection of your work day? Like, do you eat, not even like bits and pieces? So it's not like being like when you black you know, when one of us would black out drunk and then we'd start getting, as we start sobering up and start coming to the next day, we get bits and pieces of what happened the night before. Oh God, what did I do? You don't get anything like that. And that doesn't cause any anxiety. It causes a ton of anxiety. (laughs) uh, Is the anxiety getting better now that you know what's going on a little bit more? I think having some answers kind of helped me, although I didn't like the answers at first. And so, um, so have knowing, okay, I'm not just not cause so, so I have these memory boards, like all in my wall over there. And for years I've been writing on them. Like, cause I kept thinking I was forgetting what I was doing. You know, I thought like my short term memory was going, or we thought it was, like I said, some form of early onset dementia. So I had these boards where I was keeping track of everything and um, and so now we use those as communication boards. So we each have our own board and we kind of write the things we want to accomplish in a week on that board. Um, but I still struggle shifting, I guess, or, or um, having someone else kind of front as they call it. I still struggle trying to switch. So for me, it happens almost subconsciously. Um, but but blue and green and fade apparently are very, they're very aware of each other. Like, so they, they switch really fast. And so most of this I'm hearing from other people, because for me, I still don't exactly know what's going on. Although we did set up a camera in my apartment and recorded uh, for like a day. Whoa. Um, What was that like? Slipped him back through that footage. Really weird. Um, I got to imagine it's kind of like, like a real life, you know, um, paranormal activity, you know, yeah, just seeing it, yourself it, uh, do it, things that you didn't do. Yeah. And, and the, 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 the relief, like the thing that made me kind of break down at, towards the end of it was that I saw that I wasn't doing anything harmful. Um, because I kept getting scared that I was, that there's a side of me that wants to hurt things or, or is like, is my anger from stuff maybe that happened to us as a kid. Like I was thinking all the worst things. Or even and, a, a reckless 
Yeah, side. or just someone exactly like an apathetic, reckless side. Not out necessarily there. out to hurt you or somebody else, but just right. reckless and yeah. n- not forward thinking or thinking about consequences. Well, not- yeah, because that's like, you know, if, if all of these different, you know, personalities are just versions of you, fragments of you, or maybe even just different, like, uh, I don't know, just like different sections of your personality. At, at least it's got to be somewhat refreshing knowing that none of them are assholes or psychopaths. At least you know you don't have that in you. Yeah, because I, what I started doing is I would like write a couple people that I knew and I'm like, hey, have I ever like said something that was like really awful to you or, you know, ever put you in a bad situation? And it was refreshing to hear that the answer was no. But then it was also like talking things out with the therapist and stuff of like, you know, hearing their side because, you know, they have full like goals and personalities. If you, if you see my Instagram, I kind of gave blue cause he, I noticed. Uh, so one thing I don't do on Instagram, I, I don't really mess around with it too much. I go on there. The first five things that I see posted, I like, and then I kind of just re- respond to any messages and then I move on. So I'm not really on there for very long, but I've noticed that we were like liking of some things that I'm like, I don't remember liking that. And it would be like, um, like funny videos. And so I guess he just likes to sit and watch funny videos on Instagram. So I had kind of said, Hey, if you want to post in our stories about work, you can. Cause then I thought that was a good way for me to kind of keep up with what he's doing at work. And I don't know if you've ever seen those stories, but he's, uh, he brags. <laughs> he, he's like, uh, he, he's been ki- killing it apparently at, in sales. Like his sales are through the roof at this store that he works at. And he talks shit about it. <laughs> like he's, uh, he's like, fuck yeah, I did. He's like, and it's usually he picks like a rap song or something that's playing over it. And, and, uh, he's like, uh, yeah, I, I, I crush it in sales today. And he's like, uh, you know, you, all you other motherfuckers need to catch up to me. <laughs> it's like, he like talks some real shit sometimes. And I'm like, dude, that might get you fired. So I had to like leave a note, like maybe tone it down sometimes. Um, but I, I, I think he's just kind of like, he's hitting goals at work. Like uh, I got passed over for that promotion twice. And in two months at that job, he got it. He got that promotion. Um, Fuck. And I know that um, certain people at our work don't know the full story, uh, but the people I work directly with do. So like, uh, so anyone I, you know, am with on a day-to-day basis, they know. And that some of them have even met multiple versions of us. So like my boss has met um, all of us um, except Fade. I don't think she's met Fade, but she, she's. I went in one day because uh, Blue still kind of has my headaches. Um, so some days he doesn't want to go in, so I'll go in for him. Um, and then um, Green has gone in before, and uh, and Michelle has told me like numerous times. She's like, "You're different." Like, I, I mean, it's like obvious so your, your tone is different. Um, the way you stand is different. The way you walk is different. The way you're dressed is different. Um, they're all versions of you, but you're like, uh, my friend Nate probably said it best when he met green, he said, green is like you, your articulation times 10. Like he's very articulate, but, um, says very little. So if you ask him a question, his, it's like two word answers. Um, he's like very careful with how he speaks. Um, and he's, he's so since our back hurts, but to him, he doesn't feel it as much. So he can straighten, he straightens our back. So he's like, so we don't look hunched. Cause when we walk, we hunch, but like, like me he's straight. Yeah. Like I just naturally do it. My back hurts. I, you know, injury and stuff on my lower back. So I tend to hunch a lot. Well, he straightens out and his gets rid of that Mr. Up. Burns back for you. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. So now, uh, is there a way because since, you know, it's not it it sounds and maybe I'm I'm hearing this wrong, but it sounds like it's your personality. It's one personality. It's just fragmented up into different sort of phases parts. to handle different things. Yes. And, and I don't, again, not to oversimplify, but is there, 
is there a path in therapy in you know through therapy means that will ever bring those fragments back together for you or is this something that you know you're it's just going to be this way for yeah, the rest of is your the life. goal like, to like voltron back into a super seek yeah the the goal that is the goal but it's it's a long path to that goal well because and, you have to identify and make sure. sure that you have all the fragments accounted for right right because right, right. if you you have how many right now five four four, four. four. So yeah, if there's the, a, yeah, a fifth one out there that you don't know about and you do the work to bring these four together, right? It, what's the process then for that fifth when that it when and if that fifth ever decides to make their presence known? So I don't know about that, but I know that's a kind of it seems like a concern because we've been trying to map our system, even though from the get go with within the first month, we figured out there was four and we haven't noticed anyone since then but we're still like five months in now and or six months in now and still kind of mapping the system. But because like I said, I think it's important we find if there is other fragments to find all of them. Now, um, if fade is uh, with the exception of fade, who's nonverbal, mm. how do green and blue, like do you have any feeling for how they feel about the possibility of, everybody being back to together as one um well blue understands uh i guess that's his role is to so what we've learned is like they say they say this isn't a weakness like that's what they kept telling me like you're not broken um in the sense where you're weak this is this is how strong your brain is it it is constantly restructuring itself so you can survive things um everything from i guess and you know the post aneurysm healing to grief to you know anything else i'm dealing with so um so the the goal is blue understands the goal is for all of us to come together um but green according to him in therapy but we don't know it's hard to say where information comes from because I don't remember my childhood and a lot of things, but I have journals and I have my mom and I've heard stories and stuff. So it's hard to know if green's information comes from that knowledge or if he really does remember, but green claims to be pre aneurysm. Um, so he claims to have memories that we don't have access to. He claims that he comes from our childhood um, that he was when we were diagnosed the first time. Uh, so he, he claims to be that far back. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we're still, I, I don't know how to take that. It's, uh, it's, it's, it sounds, uh, I mean, a lot of this, you should see me when I go to therapy. I just, I, some of this just sounds too in it's too far for me to comprehend sometimes because I, I, I don't, I knew nothing about this condition before other than like a fight club. So yeah, I'm just it, like, it's, yeah. it's such an abstract thought, right? It, it's um, so far out of everyday interaction, you know, just everyday experiences for, you know, the population who d isn't dealing with this directly on some level. So I, you know, the adjustment even being five months in has to be, has it's, to be. It's weird. You, you see this setup behind me? Yeah. Um, I didn't do that. I, I mean, see, I, when you <laughs> mentioned that he posts on your story, I just checked the most recent post. Yeah. And for all the years I've known you, that do it doesn't sound like the seek I know at all. Like th it's not that there's anything wrong with it. It, yeah. it just, it's noticeable that there's a, a difference between, you know, the seek that brought me ramen powder at, <laughs> <laughs> at, 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 at golden apple and yeah. the seek that says, I just want to work, make money, be the best about it, brag about it. <laughs> like, right. that, like, right. like that, you know, that, that's a very, not that you're not a confident person, but that's a lot of bravado. Yeah, yeah. That, that it, it, it just, you know, so I can't imagine what it, 
it's got to be less scary knowing that there's a legitimate reason for you having these memory lapses than it being something cognitive. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say my relief was like, okay, good. But then now, now what, now this, you know, yeah, so it's, it's a uh, different set of anxieties. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But at least, you know, that it's not dementia or all the early onset Alzheimer's right. or something neurological. R- right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So for, to answer your question really long, Kevin, that's, <laughs> that's what I've been up to for about six months now. Um, and I've been, you know, my arm is still healing a little bit from, uh, from my suicide attempt. So I wear sleeves. So we all wear our own colors. Um, so I have an orange sleeve that goes over my arm. Um, I don't wear it when I'm at home, obviously, but, um, but if we go out and stuff, cause sometimes we've been to stores where like green went to home Depot, uh, to buy wood for the shelves he made. And, um, and someone saw us and, and he was just like, don't know who you are. And they're like, Oh, okay they're like seek seek and he just kept walking and they're like seek and then i guess he turned and was like i don't know you leave me alone and just went right back to shopping wow um and then that person even told me that later they were like i saw you at home depot but it definitely like like shuddy just said he's like he didn't talk like you he was blunt to me like really blunt um and he stood differently he walked differently and he was wearing boots like just didn't look anything, you know, like look just like you, but didn't carry himself the same way. Yeah. Um, and I was like, Oh shit. So we started wearing sleeves to kind of mark ourselves. So we all have our colors as sleeves. So Damn. now Kevin question for you. Did you notice any of this? No, but I'm so also a fucking moron. Like I, I don't there's so many things that I don't notice. I need to be hit over the head with shit to be no, to, to notice it. I'm a That's fool. kind of where I was going with it. I'm glad you responded that way. <laughs> <laughs> My, um, the per- so if I were to believe what I've heard in therapy, the person that would have been with me on my bouts of... Now, when I lived with Kevin, because when I lived alone, I would remember sometimes I'd be like, what was I just doing? And I would just think it's, oh, it's just age or, you know, it's something, you know, it's like you try to just dismiss it because I would only miss like 10 minutes at a time or, you know, 20 minutes at a time. So it didn't seem like a big deal. But I think when I was living with Kevin, there was a time where I think I missed like half a day or something or close to a day. And I was like, wait, what did I, I was like, what did I, what day is it? Like, I didn't even know what day it was. Um, But again, I think most of the time I would just, for me, I would excuse it, but I, that day still happened. And according to the therapy sessions, green would have been the one. So, so yeah. And, and so that was my thing with, with green. I really was interested in him because he sounds like, like you said, blue is very, um, there's bravado there, but um, he doesn't ultimately mean anyone ill, ill will, but green will just, he's just blunt. He's like, he could come across very rude. So that's why I was like, had there ever been times where I was like that? And my roommate after Kevin said that I had moments like that where he's it's like, you would you just come in and walk right past me. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, Oh wow. Well, um, it sounds like green is probably the more guarded of your sides because yeah. if he is pre aneurysm and does remember the things that the traumatic things that happened to you when you were younger, he's probably very shut off from, yeah. everybody as much and so when he takes over it's you know at times it's probably a coping me- mechanism just to make sure that you know he's protecting you sure and uh, it that i mean and i'm not educated in this at all so no, that's that's good i mean that's what they say they said like i said earlier it's they kept telling me like this is not a weakness this is how strong your brain is so like this is so but it is they are um, methods of coping for sure. So, man. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I gotta say, Seek. I know you've been through some shit, but you've always got something interesting to talk about. That's for sure. I can't. I was because I was, uh, you know, having this conversation with my mom and stuff, and I'm like, what do I do? Like, what? Like, what? Like, did I have this as a kid? And she, you know, she was, she was like, yes, you know, a form of this, but we didn't really know. 
I guess it was different how it was diagnosed in, you know, like the nineties and stuff. Um, but she, she was like, I just thought it was just a phase, like a thing that you're going to go through. Um, and, and now it's like, I'm just like, how many more things? Like, I just don't, I don't want any more things. It's like, I, I always say that I'm like, I'm, I'm done with challenges. Like I, I'm, yeah. I, that's why I work. That's why I was, I quit writing and walked away from comics and I, I took, I literally, I, I moved, you know, cr- across the country because I, you know, my mom said it would probably be better for me, which, you know, I disagree now. Like I, I regret moving. Um, and I'm, I'm just at this point where I'm like, I'm, I'm tired of these things and challenges. I'd worked a regular job, you know, I was finding like, you know, retail jobs. Like I was like, I don't want any more challenges. I just want something normal for once. And, uh, and I think, the reason some of this is coming up is obviously I think blues and echo was a big part of it, but then the frustrations of not succeeding at work was a part of it. And then um, giving up was a part of it and all these things just build and build and build. And I think that's why I, I tried to, to end it, um, which is my third attempt. Um, because I think I'm just tired of uh you know, of, of shit rolling downhill. I feel like Sisyphus, like I just keep pushing this rock and then eventually it just rolls back on me. And then I got to like run down the hill and grab it and push it back up again. And I just, I get, I'm like over it on so many levels, you know? Well, I'm glad you're still here with us. I'm glad you're still powering through. Me too. Yeah. yeah well, I guess my brain won't let me uh, give up. So thank goodness, thank goodness for that, I guess. Hey, you know, we got all the fucking time in the world to be dead when it happens. No, se- <laughs> right. no sense in rushing things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're all going to get there. But I'm, I'm going to keep working. You know, Blue has a plan, actually. He, he wants to keep working at this job, hopefully get another promotion in, you know, in a year or so. He wants to build up our 401k, and he wants to move us back to California in like five years. Fuck yeah. Um, because he said, look, if you're going to die, do it, where, do it where it feels like home at least. <laughs> and uh, and I'm like uh, okay, so I, I think it's a good plan. So so yeah, that's what we're working towards now. Yeah. Well, um, well you think, seem you seem in better spirits. No, thank you for sharing that yeah. with us. That could that's not. I I honestly wasn't. I was like I don't know how to answer when you asked me earlier. Like, what have you been up to? I'm like I don't know how to answer this. Like, do I just tell them all this bullshit or like that's been going on or or do I just play it cool and joke and, you know, brush it off like I normally do. But I think I've been so long, I've been trying to get this off my chest on, on a platform of some kind. And so I just, you know, thanks for letting me share it. Well, of course, you man. choose the podcast that's famous for their dick and fart <laughs> jokes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> way, yeah. to, way to pick the right audience. <laughs> well, I mean, well, the, 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 the format of MSPH is kind of just like, you know, free flowing. We got a lot of things, topics we're interested in and, a lot of the time it's it's venting you know like yeah obviously there's there's way very like varying degrees of things but like you know there's always some fucking foolish thing happening every time i try to do like you know the tiniest little thing always blows up to a big big catastrophe and it's fun mm-hmm. to be able to just hop on here on a microphone and share the dumb things that happened and other people can can have a laugh at it it's it's podcasting in this format is almost it is very close to therapy we're just fucking airing out all our shit so i mean yeah sure we we tell poop and fart and wiener jokes but we can vent it's all good well we're gonna vent about black adam i'm sure okay yeah because there's a couple of nerdy (laughs) things that happened in the past week one this morning but uh, I did go see Black Adam. I don't think Jeff did. Oh, no, I'm going to go see it this week, actually. I am also going to see it this week, and I have a text message review from one of the children, so I want to see oh. how yours stacks up to his. Okay. I mean, I kind of... I don't read a ton of DC comics. Like, I love Green Lantern. I love Batman. And... Like, uh, you know, Swamp Thing, Constantine. But as far as the big stuff, I don't really read Superman comics. I don't read a lot of Justice League stuff. Um, 
So I've, Black Adam, don't know much about the character. Black Adam has popped in and out of a couple of comics that I've read, but never did too much digging or homework. So this was kind of one of those things where it's like, all right, I'll see what's up just to stay in line with the continuity. And every now and then, like I feel like DC for the most part really fucking whiffs with their movies. But I did very much enjoy Shazam. I thought Shazam was fucking great. It was like a perfect blending of big with Tom Hanks with a superhero element. Um, I really liked the first Wonder Woman. That might be it. I don't know if Joker counts. Why not? That's a DC movie. I count it. It's good. Okay. Yeah. I like Joker. Joker was fucking sick. I even liked uh, <laughs> Harley Quinn. I know a lot of people didn't like Harley Quinn, but I thought Harley Quinn was good. You mean Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one <laughs> Harley Quinn? I hate that as much as I hate spooky season. <laughs> <laughs> so I went in with very low expectations and. I kind of liked it. I'm not going to lie. Like, it wasn't the greatest thing in the world. It's not fucking Dark Knight. It's not, you know, Avengers Infinity War. But it had it had fun moments. The action was cool. How does cool. it stack up to Shazam? Not as good as Shazam, but still more enjoyable. More serious, right? Yeah, it was more serious. Uh, the Rock was good. I liked The Rock. Uh, I thought Pierce Brosnan as Dr. Fate was fucking sick. Best part of the movie was Dr. Fate. Cool as fuck. The only thing that sucks is like, you know, obviously Marvel and DC loved to create two sides of the same coin, you know? Like DC has Dr. Fate. Marvel has Dr. Strange. They're very similar. And then, you know, you got Adam Smasher doing a lot of the shit that you saw Ant-Man do in Ant-Man 2 when he could turn into Giant Man and shit. So it is kind of like, ah, I've kind well, of seen Well, that these... is actually Marvel stealing from DC. Well, yeah, yeah. I wasn't accusing one. one or the other. Like because I know they're the Justice Society. So they're from before the Justice League and the Avengers. Well, yeah, and Deadpool was like a knockoff of um, Deathstroke. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of just like poking fun at DC. Like, oh, you have Slade Wilson and Wade Wilson. Wilson. Well, we have Wade Wilson, and he's kind of a stupid jerk-off. And then people are like, you know what? I really like this stupid jerk-off. And then fucking Deadpool became massive. Like, uh, even Thanos and Darkseid are very similar. They play very similar roles in their respective universe. So while they were doing really cool shit, it was like, yeah, I, I saw a lot of this stuff in, you know, Captain America Civil War or Doctor Strange. Still very fun. I don't know what you thought, Zeke. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely like it's not a movie that took any risks or reinvented any wheels. Um, I thought the first hour was boring as shit. Honestly, uh, I wasn't until the interactions between the the JSA and um, Black Adam started happening more that I was like, then you got some good banter and personalities colliding. So yeah. they spend the first hour like setting up the personalities, which is fine. Um, and they do something cool with where they they tell you his origin, Black Adam's origin, and then they throw a twist in it towards the end. Which, uh, as someone who knew the character, I actually didn't see that twist coming. So I think the last half of the movie saved it for me um, to where I I liked it. Sounds like I liked it on the same level as Kevin. I don't like it as much as Shazam or even, but I might like it a little bit more than the first wonder woman or right around that area. Cause the first wonder woman I liked up until the final act and it got a little goofy in the fighting, like the big battle at the end. Yeah. Whereas this one, the final battle was a big spectacle, but characters actually use their brains in it, which I kind of liked. Um, and there's a cool moment with like Hawkman that surprised me in that final battle. So yeah, I would say um, in the end, I was glad I saw it. I was like, Oh wow. This is a, a decent DC movie. And at this point that is really all they could. That's good for them. <laughs> Cause yeah. they could use a couple of just decent, you know, movies um, because they're just, they're, you know, I don't know. Did you like the Batman that came out earlier this year? Yeah. Yeah. I mean like they, they make, they still make some good stuff like Joker. It's like, I think people think 
uh, uh, the misconception or whatever the uh, uh, the perception is that they only make bad movies. But I'm like you. I like Shazam. I liked Wonder Woman. Uh, it's just some of that Zack Snyder stuff wasn't for my personal liking. Yeah. And this movie feels like it has some of that. A little cloth bit. We've, a little bit weaved in. Yeah, because um, DC really loves those fucking slow mo shots that just go on forever. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, but but this but this movie also suffered. I like The Rock. He's very charismatic, and I was happy he got to play this character because you wouldn't have got this movie without The Rock. Like they wouldn't have oh, just made sure. a Black Adam movie yeah. if he didn't have someone on his level. But the the negative to that is he's not like the greatest actor in the world, so he doesn't <laughs> ever really act like Black Adam in the movie, other than just being like a stern Terminator Two style Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Um, and that's the same thing with Jason Momoa as Aquaman. I feel like they sometimes they just cast their characters and go, you're nothing like our comic book character, but just be you. And it's like, well, Jason Momoa, he's also not one of the best actors in the world, in my opinion. So he's just like, I'll be a bro. Yeah, I'll be Aquaman, brother. You know, and it's like, OK, whatever. And then people go, oh, that's a, just a different take on Aquaman. I go, no, it's Jason Momoa acting or just being Jason Momoa. Yeah. Um, and they do that a lot in DC movies. They just hire actors to just be themselves. And um. I feel like but, the most yeah. confusing part of it all is because, you know, DC is clearly trying to play catch up to Marvel. Marvel did a slow burn. They took a big yeah. gamble with Iron Man and it mm -hmm. fucking ruled. And they tacked yep. on a Nick Fury post credit scene, you know, just in case. Mm -hmm. And then they just slowly introduced the characters, threw them all together for a couple of movies, and then just went down the line and kept introducing more and more and more. And DC was like, wow, they're fucking killing it. Let's just jump to the point where they're at. And it right. was just like, man, right. you guys aren't taking your time. This this all feels very rushed. Right. Um, and, and then it's, it's also confusing because it's like, okay, you had the Juggalo Joker with fucking Jared Leto. Right. Right. And then you get the actual like creepy, fucked up, gritty Joker with Joaquin right. Phoenix. And it's like, okay, well, right. which one exists in this movie universe? I'm so confused. And then you have Ben Affleck playing Batman in all the shared movies, but then they just like randomly poop out a Robert Pattinson one. It's like, <laughs> I, like I, while they're good, it's like, what are you guys doing? What is happening? I think there's a lot of div division over at Warner Brothers. There was people that wanted a shared universe, and then people who were just like, I want to, we want to make money and use these characters. And I think that's what was happening over there is just a collision of those ideals. Um, so it's like, okay, you get your two shared movies and I'll get my one Joker and you get your shared movie here. And I get my Robert Pattinson, Batman. It, it felt like a compromise. And by doing that, I think they just made everything more of a mess than anything. And I think they legitimately tried to move on past the Zack Snyder stuff. And then now I think these new people that are coming in and in charge of Warner brothers now, because that's the other thing. Warner Brothers in the past five years has gone through like three owners. Like uh, like they're on their third owner now. So there's just hard, it's impossible to get a consistent, uh, like I guess, approach to this. Like the second owner said, no, that the Zack Snyder stuff failed. So we got to go in a new direction. And then, and then the third group comes in and they're like, well, maybe the Zack Snyder stuff wasn't so bad. So let's weave that into with The Rock and our future movies. And so it's just like, ah, it's like, it just seems very schizophrenic, I guess, is a good word. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I saw Black Adam on like a Thursday night release. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went I went to like a late showing. It was, you know, I went to AMC, 1030 showing. So that mo means the movie doesn't start until 11 because you have to sit through, you know, 15 trailers and then that that fucking weird movie propaganda piece that Nicole Kidman filmed. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I don't know why you need that in the theater. It seems like, like, hey, go see movies, but you're preaching to the wrong fucking people. We're the people that are already here and bought a ticket. Yeah, I hate that. That's still a thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it became a joke, and, <clears throat> like, most of the times when I go to AMC, when that thing starts, people start cheering and laughing because it's so fucking stupid. But at this point, it's like, I already sat through 27 minutes of trailers. Can we start the fucking thing? Like, air this propaganda piece on network TV. Be like, hey, right. remember how fun movies were? Not the people yeah. that are already there. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it, you know, the, the movie ended at fucking 1 a.m., so I was still kind of tired. 
and it wasn't a packed theater. Uh, but for just the small amount of people that were in there, the movie got a big reaction. People were laughing way more at the jokes than I was, and yeah. the post credit scene, people were like flipping the fuck out. I thought that they were just going to grab the chairs, rip them out of the, the <laughs> ground, and just start throwing them in riot because people were really pumped. Is yeah. it that good of a scene? I don't think... I mean, it's it's just, it's definitely a scene that makes sense. Right. Uh, yeah. Without ruining it, I'll say it does not introduce a new character. Okay. But somebody shows up and people lost their fucking shit. And I was like, why yeah. you... Like, this is what I expected to happen here. I think I have an idea of what it is. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to spoil it, but there were some pictures recently floating around on the internet that made it seem like somebody was reprising a role. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it was worthwhile. If you like superhero movies, if you like all that shit worth seeing, there's some you can skip. I would say this is a watch. Like, I don't know. I'll suck three and a half black Adam dicks. Oh man. I'll suck those balls from each of those dicks then. (laughs) <laughs> Ten balls, <laughs> no seven balls. <laughs> seven balls. Okay, so what is that? Is that seven three and a half? Is that seven out of ten dicks. balls? Yeah. So, so, yeah. No. Yeah. No. Uh, yes, I guess so. You said three and a half dicks, so yeah, yeah. it'd be seven out of ten balls. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Did any of you guys see the new Ant Man trailer that dropped this morning? No. I feel no, like I was going to watch it later. We have, I feel like we haven't brought up one conversation that Jeff has wanted to be a part of. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel bad. Yeah, Jeff blew his load in the Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen to my valuable contribution in this episode in the Easter egg. Just fuck you, YouTube. <laughs> you get nothing today. Um, yeah, I, I saw the Ant-Man one. It, it's, uh, I think more than anything, I'm just excited for more Kang the Conqueror. Yeah, looks promising. Yeah. Marvel's kind of been yeah. shitting their pants. I didn't like Doctor Strange. Um, the recent mm-hmm. TV stuff has been lackluster. Ms. Marvel was yeah. meh. She-Hulk was meh. Yeah. I like Loki. I like Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. I like Thor Love and Thunder. I know a lot of people hated that. I don't understand why so many people hated that movie. I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, it was like middle of the road for me. I didn't hate it, but I was just like... I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes when people go that hard in, I'm like, I don't know, man, you're, you're projecting or you're some kind of grifter, you know, on YouTube trying to build an audience of haters. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I'm like, it's not that bad. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like the new Ant-Man's got looks visually looks like they're doing some cool shit. Saw fucking Bill Murray randomly pop up. I was like, Whoa, yeah. that's weird. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of excited for it. Jeff, did you watch any murder documentaries or any shit like that? Yeah, I watched The Vatican Girl. Well, most of it. Uh, it's a four-episode true crime documentary about a girl who, uh, like a 14-year-old girl who's the daughter of a Vatican official who gets kidnapped, and then they investigate the kidnapping and where she is and her, you know, where she was, how, how she was kidnapped and by who and for what reason. I thought it was very interesting. Obviously touches on the, uh, the mass corruption that is in the Vatican, um, which is just a story as old as time itself. Um, I find like Italian culture and like the Vatican and all that shit to be very interesting. I talked about this recently because I took Latin in high school. And like one of the reasons that I, didn't hate it. It was just because I like learning about ancient Rome and like that whole empire and all that shit. So um, actually Italy is like one of the only like non-American countries I fuck with, to be honest. Really? <laughs> if I were to like visit Europe, all I really want to see is like Italy. Like, I'm, I'm really, interested. I don't really care about any, any, dogs any of the other nations. countries, but I thought it was good. I still got to watch the final 20 minutes. That's what I was doing before we jumped on the zoom as I was, uh, wrapping up the Vatican girl, but it, it's good. Um, I mean, everyone's speaking Italian though, right? Um, there's no subtitles, but it's dubbed over. I didn't find it to be that distracting. Um, but I thought it was, it was a good documentary. Someone from, uh, the Puminati put me on Marshall Festus, I think, uh, cool. told me about it on Instagram. Just 
whatever, just the homie. So shout out. It's cool. If you if you're into that kind of shit, I'm sure you'll be into this. It's not as like creepy or sinister as like some of like the recent Netflix documentaries. It was made by the same people who did uh Don't Fuck with Cats, which is like really fucked up. Yeah, my um, sister this... just described Don't Fuck with Cats to me and I was like, All right, I got it. No need to watch. I am not watching. I really this show. can't believe you didn't watch that one. That one was actually fun to watch. That was really good. See if I if I get myself into like one of these true crime series that are like eight episodes, an hour long each. That's like four movies that I can't watch. I feel like those things just hog too much of your time, and I need, I need my time to watch movies. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, I'll suck four Vatican girl dicks. <laughs> wow! Man. Wow! Yeah, like, just Holler the sentence me. alone. Holler at me, Puminati ladies, getting my DMs to talk about this true crime stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. What, I mean, you want true crime. I know my and true crime lifetime. I know my, I know my uh, true okay. crime O-W-N. chick squad follows it. Right. Okay. Nice. Oh. That sounds good, actually. It does sound good. Yeah, you're right about Italy. Like they haven't won a war in like 200 years, but uh, I'm sure they've killed a lot of people in the, in the Vatican and uh, covered up a lot of shit. They definitely raped a lot of people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfect. Sorry, Italy. <laughs> I mean, I grew up Catholic. My, you know. Yeah. So you know. So you know. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, my bubble yeah. has been used. Oh boy. Yeah, we don't want to talk about those deep-seated thoughts. Yeah. I, uh, the only film I've watched since we recorded last was Monster Squad, which, if you're a member of Patreon, uh, you heard me rant, not rant. You heard me rave about it on the last What the Fuck Did I Just Watch? Love that movie. Always have five dicks. Hey, five monster dicks. How do you feel about Monster Squad? Seek, do you like it as I, much as these guys? Yeah, that's a great movie. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I don't know nice. about a five. I mean, it's up there. Though. I'd probably say a four or four and a half for me. Yeah, it's good. Have, have you ever seen it, Jeff? Monster Squad? No, I have not. I got a phone call while... <laughs> Shuddy and Dom were recording that episode of What the Fuck Did I Just Watch? Well, first he got a phone call that he didn't answer, then a text message from me that says, call me back as soon as you see this. It's very important. I was at breakfast. <laughs> so Kevin, You were actually me. doing something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a, I usually I just figure you wouldn't answer the phone because you don't like phone, phone calls. At least you had a legit excuse. Why but he my also phone? called me back for me to ask him monster squad questions. <laughs> yeah, it was just so Shuddy and Dom could bully me into changing my letterbox D score from a four and a half to a five. Oh, I see. Okay. That's not how it went. It was asking you <laughs> why it was only four and a half. And you said, well, I don't really have a reason. And no, I said, said some of the dialogue was a little weak. I get, I did give an explanation, but what? the dialogue in monster squad week. Sounds like a stupid thing to deduct points on. <laughs> the the main kid in Monster Squad has like this fucking cool guy complex that's like, settle like down, blue buddy. Blue or green? You're not that cool. No, green. Throw green. Yeah. Like there already is a cool kid in the Monster Squad who has like a leather jacket and he does power slides on his bike and he smokes ciggies and he wants to like bone chicks. And then this... This little dweeb who's like, I don't know, maybe two or three years younger than him is like, Ugh. like fucking popping his neck and shit. Like, we're the, well, fucking, we're he's the monster the squad. Leader. He's the leader, buddy. He kind of shouldn't be. I think leather leather jacket guy should be the leader. You think Rudy should be the leader? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Or fat kid. I like fat kid. So, so there's half a point because of that. Yeah. His name is Horace. But Horace, they call him yeah. fat kid. And the like, the older brother from Wonder Years like bullies him, and he goes real hard too. I think he calls him a faggot and stuff. Like you could say a wow. lot. You could you say even a lot. Just in... busted it out. Well, Mon- I'm quoting Monster Squad. They like That's how it works. I mean, we won't get canceled or taken off of YouTube. <laughs> yeah, this episode will get something. demonetized. It is yeah. still Man, like when you I should quote my favorite Eminem song, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh, shit. Like when you pop on an '80s kids movie and you hear them drop those, it's just like. 
Whoa. It was very jarring. Yeah. When yeah. that happened, I was like, whoa. I also watched. That's why you got to use them more personally. So it's just like you're used to it. Like they even drop <laughs> it in. <laughs> they drop it in the gate. I don't know if you guys have ever seen The Gate. Yeah. With yeah, like a, yeah. a young Stephen Dorff. But like mm-hmm. the, the the parents go out of town and they leave him and his older sister behind. And the older sister invites her friends over and they start like picking on the, the, the little brother a little bit. And he sort of like answers back and walks out of the room. And then he just real quick pokes his head back in and just goes, fag! And then just Whoa! <laughs> like books it and runs away. <laughs> like little kid movies just really yeah. hit that hard in the 80s yeah but uh I grew up faster than you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i also watched wolfman's got nards oh i want to watch that uh, uh, was it worth yeah, it because you, you have to rent you have to rent it uh i watched it on tubi for free oh hmm. okay well with commercials which that's fine were a bummer but i'd rather watch like 60 seconds of commercials to watch something for free than to you know that's rent true. it for like six dollars on prime it was it was really good it opened my eyes to a lot of things about the monster squad that i didn't know hmm. the only behind the Most scenes things that i know is that, that it was not well received when it was released in the theaters well that makes sense <laughs> i saw it at, in the theater and just assumed everybody had i just knew that the the, the actor that played fat kid he like died when he was twenty two. He died real young. Jeez. How? I think he got pneumonia. Nineteen ninety seven. Got pneumonia. Was at the hospital. They sent him home because his insurance wouldn't pay anymore. He got even more sick. Went back to the hospital and died while he was at the hospital. Wow. So he went out like a true American. Yep. Getting fucked over by the healthcare system. But there's not a problem with it, Kevin. Relax. Relax. Let's oh, not go with you're the, right. the healthcare system that has nothing wrong with it. Uh, you're right. Next is, thing you're going to say that climate change is a thing. <laughs> Let's not get, bring any of any of that what, fucking nonsense. Either. What's happening right now? <laughs> I think Shuddy Boy's brownie kicked in. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you know, I just, That's what's you happening. know, I've just been reading some of Jeff's articles, and you know. Yeah, I really call. I really covered climate change in the Tennessee Titans, <laughs> Indianapolis Colts bet that I wrote about. Well, you know, it is that <laughs> website you work for. This is the problem. I don't think I don't think they cover climate change very often. Actually, hold on, I'll go to their breaking news. The latest <laughs> article published was Stephen A. Smith tells Bill Maher just how much he likes big booty. And the one before that, Paige Sporanics. <laughs> Halloween costume is a tribute to Cammy from Street Fighter. Hey, cool. It's kind of woke. Street Fighter, I'm listening. Kind of yeah. woke. <laughs> kind of woke. woke. And yes, the up. brownie uh, did oh, just kick okay. in, guys. Nice. Yeah, okay. Almost right on time. Ooh. Oh, man. Breaking news. Huge development. Outkick just just uh, landed this story. Actually, a couple hours ago. Should I, should I TikTok- tee you up? TikTok star Pia Blossom I that's was no. dumped by a boyfriend over my Halloween costume. What? Come on. How shallow no. can you be? No climate change today, Shuddy. We're on bigger. We got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> what was her costume? Uh, she, she got huge Nagatos. I, I don't know. She's got a couple of them she's wearing. Hold on. I have to, I have to click into this article. Uh, I'd break over too. She can't pick one costume. Yeah, she sounds well, real annoying. <laughs> I don't even I mean, I gotta know go change. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't even know what's happening right now. Right. Um, just, she wanted. She wanted to go to a party dressed as every character from Nightmare Before Christmas. And uh, dude, she, my she ex got changing. like. She got like three different costumes for the three different Halloween parties. Chicks, now chicks go all out for spooky season. Yeah, no, that's, diff- that's different. That's different. It's yeah. If it's three different parties, yeah. That's well. good. I understand what this lady's boyfriend's going through. <laughs> I fucking, I literally almost ended it at a fucking Halloween store. Oh my God. Really? Do you know how fucking annoying it is to be in a Halloween store for 90 minutes? No, especially, I, I would... especially when you pick out your costume in the first fucking 15. <laughs> uh, oh, I guess I'll be up. a slutty janitor. <laughs> I'll just shut up. I think I spent 60 minutes in spirit Halloween like last week. 
Oh, what, what, what's your Halloween costume going to be? I mean, you got um, you got a shop for like four or five, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that because uh, actually, I was yes. hoping it was funny. I mean, uh, if, yeah, if it wasn't, it would have uh, went the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. That was definitely something where I'm like, oh. I appreciate you rolling the dice on that one. Um, uh, <laughs> I won't, I won't keep this edgy. <laughs> you took a risk. I won't. I won't punish you for it. Um, yeah, actually, Blue is uh, excited because this is his first Halloween. So, yeah, he has a costume. Uh, he's he's going as uh, Jack Skellington, actually, Night Before Christmas. Um, and I'm going to go as a Court of Owls member because um, I'm playing uh, Gotham Knights right now. And uh, oh, um, okay, perfect. Oh, yeah. yeah I, How is that? Yeah, and I'm. I am yeah, great. So far, it's pretty good. Huge. Um, I am great glad job. to glad. Let's get off of this outkick bullshit and find yeah. like. Because I've been stupid. Let's go to Gotham Tales. Because <laughs> uh, I have I like been, the Jeff stuff. The I have been debating pulling the trigger on Gotham Knights, and okay, it seems that there's a lot of bad press surrounding the game, and a lot of what I I feel like it is, at least from what I can see, is that a lot trolls. of people are very <laughs> upset about the. Uh, refresh rate and that oh, it's not so much the game so much but I just being that you're playing it I would like to hear your feedback because I very much want to buy it but don't want to the last non-sports game that I purchased was Cyberpunk when it released and oh, that wow. has that didn't made me well. that yeah so I have not been able I have not taken a flyer on anything uh, since um, so. I'll just just to be brief, I'll just say so far I'm only like three hours into Gotham Knights. Um, the intro was awesome, the opening cutscene, um, and the uh, the gameplay's fun. I understand people's frustration with 30 frames per second. I think the reason it goes that slow is because um, that way, like if you have the game and I have the game, if I'm no matter where I am in the game, you can jump in as another character, and me and you can co-op the game. Um, so it has, I guess in their mind because the city's so big and there's so much going on that they're like, okay, we have to make it 30 frames per second. So people can drop in and out of the game whenever they want to. So it's prepared for that kind of hit. Does it look bad? Like, do, see, it, I don't, I, I don't think it does. I'm playing it on the Xbox series S. Um, so I, it looks fine to me on my like 63 inch, you know, HD TV, you know, so it looks good to me, but I'm also, I don't know. I feel like every time I say a game looks good, someone will go, yeah, but look at all these little details. I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe I just didn't notice that. Um, so, so far the gameplay is fun, but it is, it is uh, redundant. There's a lot of like, all right, go on patrol and you have the whole city you can run around in at any point. Um, so it's not like you have to unlock areas uh, of the city. You can just run around and do random, stop random crimes and then go back to the belfry and turn those in and get extra you know, points and stuff. So there's that's all I've been doing so far, and I'm only probably like five or ten percent into the actual story. But the story is what I'm liking. Uh, as a comic book fan, I'm really intrigued of where the hell they're going to go. Because in a comic book, you kill Batman, he's going to come back in like a year. You know it, you know. Um, but in a video game, like it's like, oh, Batman's dead, and they and you see the body, and you're like, okay, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting them to actually show the body. I thought they were going to try to leave it open to be a mystery. Yeah, and, but then uh, all you need is Ra's al Ghul with one of his fucking Lazarus pits. and So the, the, opening, back in the, scene is Ra, the opening scene is Ra's al Ghul and, and Bruce Wayne killing each other in the Batcave. Oh, um, so and, he's dead. Uh, <laughs> so so they, they, kind of, they kind of take that away in the first two minutes. You're like, oh, the, shit, okay. Then the Joker um, went around and took a dump in every Lazarus pit and that, you know... <laughs> Spoiled the sauce. Can't use those. Well, if if I remember the correctly, I think the Court of Owls use Mister Freeze's cryo technology to keep dead bodies alive. So there's probably still a way for them to bring Bruce back at, at some point. But um, but the game's kind of centered around them, like learning about the Court of Owls for the first time. So I don't know. At least for me, I'm so far I'm enjoying it. Uh, but I understand people's criticisms of it. It just the the few little glitches I've had so far haven't hindered my enjoyment of it so far how does it compare to the other batman games to like arkham it's, knight and it's not it doesn't compare at all really it's um 
the combat though is very fun. It's very fluid, like the Arkham games, but um, not maybe not as fluid. But these are also people with different skill sets than Batman. Um, so it's uh, but some of their special moves, like I, I jumped off a building, grappled as Batgirl. I grappled a guy, pulled him up, and then flipped around him and came down <laughs> and like did like a like a reverse DDT move or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, okay, that was, and then immediately jumped. Pile into driver. Yeah. It was like a pile driver, like, uh, but with his head up here. And so she's just like, bam. And then she just turns and starts batoning everybody around her. So I was like, well, that was very fluid for a game that runs at 30 frames per second. So, no shit. Yeah. 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 I would say watch if you want, you could, uh, I'm going to upload some of those videos. They're on my Twitch channel, but I'm going to put them on my gaming YouTube channel. If you want to just check out like the first video where I play as red hood, That'll, I think that'll give you a, a gauge of... Okay, yeah, I will like. definitely check that out because I've been trying to... I've been waffling back and forth on it since Thursday. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll put the video up tomorrow and I'll send you a link to it. All right, cool, thanks, man. You got it. Shuddy, uh, we rented a movie over the weekend that you absolutely hated. Uh-oh. Oh. Goblin 2? No, I like <laughs> Goblin 2. <two. laughs> Sorry. Bodies, bodies, bodies. Oh. Okay. <laughs> going to give him PTSD. <laughs> yeah, because and... I guess it's up on Prime now, so you can, like, rent it for six bucks. Um, uh, I will say... So you have a $5 limit. Remember you didn't buy those snacks because they were $5? $6, this guy's in a rent. Oh, what man. snack did you not buy for $5? It was a oh, Cheetos, the... Right? Um, the Cheeto, the small bag of Cheetos, Mexican, Mexican street, street corn. corn. If, if that offended you, how do you feel about this fucking six dollar bodies, bodies, bodies rental? No, well, I paid more than that to see it at the theater. So, so I guess Kevin's getting off lately. Yeah, and it was it was Car- <laughs> Carl's Prime account. So, so oh. Kevin saw it for free. You yep. in Venmo? <laughs> <laughs> I got the request, but I'm pretending I didn't see it. <laughs> nice. Um. I will like the trailer annoyed me because it's like, oh, all these obnoxious Gen Z motherfuckers saying all this Gen Z shit in a horror movie. Um, and every character in that movie is obnoxious as fuck. They all suck. They all stink. And oh, perfect for killing them then in a movie. Yeah. And it, that was kind of what like, you know, I, I was curious to see it. I saw it did get good reviews, but a lot of people I know that saw it didn't like it. Didn't like it, and I was like, "All right, well, I'm still curious. I want to see what's up." And it does suck sitting through 90 minutes of their shit. But I really did like the twist at the end. Oh, like that kind of. It's so hard to say it justified. The previous 90 minutes, you know? It was, it was a good way, but it ended on a good note then. Yeah, because I mean, the, the the whole movie is kind of just, uh, I don't know what you would call it, commentary or, or uh, fuck, my brain's it giving up on it. It is social commentary, 100%. Yeah, but it's also sort of lampooning the way Gen mm. Z people act, like it's... Satire. Yeah, there we go. Right. Fuck, that's the right. fucking word that I've been struggling for the past 90 seconds, but yeah. And it's it's clowning them. And once okay. the end happens, you're just like, oh, I fucking get it. But it's like, boy, I had to sit through a lot of blood-boiling shit to get to this moment. Fucking Lee Pace was incredible in it, though. He was. Lee Pace kicks ass. Lee Pace was incredible in it. It took, it took me a little while into the movie to realize it was him. Uh, How could you not notice Lee Pace? Because he he didn't have his Ronan the Lee Accuser outfit on. Yeah, yeah, he's from Guardians of the Galaxy. Who wouldn't know who Lee Pace is? Oh, look at that! <laughs> he's also from uh, Halt and Catch Fire. So I would never watch Bodies, Bodies, Bodies again. But yes. it was uh, I don't know. So it's, would that ending have been that twist been as good if it wasn't? if those characters weren't obnoxious the whole time was like, did that set up for the twist to be as good as it was? Yeah. The two were integral. Okay. Can right, well, you, that's good. 
you cannot tell me that the main character's Eastern European accent, even though it's her natural speaking voice, didn't sound fake and forced as fuck. Her natural her real speaking accent voice was fake. Fake. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? That's, that's what, yeah. Is it that... sounded like somebody doing a bad Eastern European accent, in my opinion. It was. It's the girl that un... played Borat's daughter in Borat too. I haven't seen that yet, actually. Like she, yeah, she, that you she does have an accent. List. Yeah, I put it on the watch. I love the first one, so yeah, I should watch that. One. No, it wasn't. Yeah, I don't know. Bodies, so bodies, bodies. Gone, right? Somewhere between like a two point seven five dicker and a three dicker. Question. Oh. Any titties in bodies, bodies, bodies? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. then it gets a it gets no dick sucked. Which was a bummer. It's a horror movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? Every these horror modern movie day horror titties. Movies. Yeah, these modern ones suck though at doing that. They fucking mail it in, right? Yeah. Let's yeah. go back to the old days when you'd smoke indoors and there were titties on screen. <laughs> yeah, they like they're they're overcompensating now with like an overabundance of wiener. Like in Halloween Ends, Michael Myers had his fucking dick hanging out of his pants while he was slaughtering people. Just felt a little what? unnecessary. Did he really? Oh. I was just trying to drop on the on the. Listen, bros I, I can't. I wouldn't put it past anybody to do something like that. Well, to have Michael what, Myers, was like the only gay thing they didn't do in Halloween Ed Ends or whatever the was, fuck you call it. Was that, that movie? good? Because because I'll be honest, Halloween and Halloween Kills, I hated both of them. See, I actually so, liked the first one. Revelation. Okay. And then the second yeah. one was H2O, baby. very way. bad. And yeah. then the third one was somehow the worst of them all. Cheech kind of liked it. He's the only person I've heard say something like that. You, okay, Bill, gotcha. Bill hated it, but didn't really say that much. He, <laughs> I mean, he alluded to it. I don't know. It's weird. I don't think he likes to like, grade movies strongly. Um, hmm. but I know he didn't like it and I fell asleep. I was sleeping throughout most of the whole fucking thing. And every time I woke up, it was just like, Oh, this is stupid. I don't know. I don't know who that kid was, but man, that character sucked. That was lame. <laughs> the, yeah. The dude. Yeah. You I didn't agree. watch it. Right. See, no, I have Peacock. I just haven't watched it yet. Fair enough. Yeah. I guess if you're just morbidly curious to see how everything wraps up, it's worth I'm checking not. out, but yeah. It's a, to me, out of all the horror franchises, or most of them anyway, the big ones like Freddy, Jason, and Michael Myers and stuff, and Scream. Like, I'd say I probably like Halloween the least because uh, I see people all the time go like, "Oh, this, you know, this one ruined the franchise." I'm like, I've only liked the first Halloween. Like, that's it. Uh, so, so to me, I'm like, they've all ruined the franchise. <laughs> like, they all just get worse and worse. Yeah. So, um, so to me, I, I've just never been a fan of that franchise. Um, but, uh, yeah, more Jason movies. I'm all for Jason. I like him a lot. Yeah. He doesn't, get tired of killing, he doesn't get tired of killing teenagers and you're not going to do anything like different with them, which is like some things just need to be the same. And, uh, and, I, and so whether he goes in space or he goes to camp crystal Lake, as long as he's killing teenagers or hell awesome. or hell. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that one, he, he wasn't in that one that much. Everyone was like eating his heart or something. That was a weird one. That was really Whatever. fucking weird. Yeah. I kind of want to rewatch Freddy versus Jason. You should. It's fun. I, I haven't I seen that in a long time, thing. but yeah, it, it's fun. I remember it being really fun. Like the yeah. battle between the two of them and then them just trying to compete for body counts. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we have come to the end, my friends. Seek, it was great seeing you again, man. Um, yeah. It's the yeah. end, my only friend, the end. Where can people check out your YouTube videos? So YouTube has these handles now. You can just type in at, like you can on Twitter and stuff. Um, so you can just do at the Venom Vlog, uh, Venom Vlog, B-L-O-G. Uh, that's my handle on Twitter. I mean, I'm sorry, not on Twitter. My handle on YouTube and Instagram. Oh, nice. So you can find me there. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Are they still doing Venoms? Yeah, there's a like there's, the uh, show or something. Like, is there is there like a Disney Plus show going on right now? No, they're going to do a third movie though with Tom Hardy, and they're they just I think they're about finished writing it, and they're going to start filming it next year. I think. Oh shit! Okay. Huh. 
I was uh, wondering what the Venom vlog was covering currently. <laughs> we got one more movie, and I'm at 735 episodes. So Holy we're shit. gonna we're gonna try to make it to a thousand episodes uh, by the time you know in the aftermath of that movie. So I mean, you're three fourths of the way there. It's the home stretch, baby. Yeah, Final man, so, yeah, two years left, and then I'll I'll wrap it up and uh, mm-hmm. and I'll figure out what to do after that. I'm gonna start a Moon Knight podcast actually. Um, so. And, oh, fuck yeah. and, po- and possibly we'll see my friend who's going to co-host with me he wants to see if maybe one of my alters we might do an episode where we talk to them so uh so i don't know we'll see i'm like not green or blue yeah like i'm not comfortable doing it yet but i mean i gotta it, i pretty much go by where i am with my therapist so if if she thinks it's a good exercise in in you know um communication with us then yeah, you might see that on that show. So yeah, uh, if yeah, you, you got to make sure. If you want to add any He-Man content to the Venom vlog, I know a guy. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, because yeah, you know we'll the, the, those two universes interact all the time. <laughs> you should, yeah, you should start a YouTube channel called like the He-Man Manuscript, and then you guys like partner up. Somehow the He just... Manuscript. That <laughs> sounds. <laughs> that that sounds like something very not woke. That sounds like very almost <laughs> proud boyish. Like the He Manuscript. It sounds like it's a it's a show about being an alpha male. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My new job's rubbing off on me, huh? <laughs> no betas here, bitches. <laughs> um. Well, if you guys need more MSPH content. You can check out patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour. Tons of new shit just went up over the weekend. Um, I don't know if Dom, I haven't checked yet. I don't know if Dom put up the uh, Monster Squad episode, but I'm sure by the time this hits your eardrums, it'll be there. So check that out. Uh, 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 Shuddy. If you are like me and you live in a climate that is getting colder, or like seek Kevin and Jeff and you live in a climate that is warm. If you go to I'm all gone.com slash collections slash MSPH, you can outfit yourself in a all seeing I pooty, all seeing I poo neck or all seeing poo P shirt. We've got merch, a new merch store up. Man, those puns really make it confusing to try and describe what you're buying. All right, a hoodie, a crew neck, or a t-shirt. <laughs> I am the creative mind behind all of this. So he is. He's the genius. The merch genius. Of, don't don't. Uh, uh, I've taken some consultation uh, advice from Boognish on some of the names. So uh, that you know, they're definitely poo centric for sure. But there's a. Uh, there's also a poozy or koozie as some people call them. You can get them for a regular beer can, or if you prefer white claws, there is a thin can as well. Oh, poozy. is there a wide one for my pizza port? Oh, the round. Yes, seek. Question. Yeah, I so I yeah. Um I just want to say before we sign off that the to the Puminati, like a lot of them follow me on Instagram and when I was going through some of this stuff over the past few months, a lot of them reached out to me in DMs and stuff. And I just want to say, you guys have a tremendous audience of, of viewers, listeners, and friends. And I'm, I'm very grateful that I met you guys and that, that met, introduced me to them. And it just, it means a lot. So you guys got a great uh, a group of followers with you. Definitely. Fuck. Yeah. Yep. Hey, so ones that bought the hoodie, they're cool. The rest of them, man, eh, whatever. <laughs> Jeff, you can't you can't lump everybody into that. That was a Patreon exclusive that's sold oh. out in less than forty eight hours. That we that was that exceeded all expectations and all previous sales uh, plat. It's <laughs> like sales sure. Hey, you want to take it easy on them? Go ahead. That's your choice. I come on, call the rest of those guys pussies. <laughs> yeah, we're very uh, grateful for you know the amount of merch that we sold, but all it's done has really just fucking lit a fire under Shuddy's ass, and now he's just texting <laughs> us all day like, okay, what about if we have MSPH uh, footy pajamas and there's a fucking ass flap in the back? <laughs> okay, like I, was a baby one. I love workshop and that stuff. For I was getting prices for dab mats. I am hustling for us, guys. We... Are yeah, you're going doing a great to job. The, the best merch store in the business. All thanks to to Chris at Gone Clothing helping us out. And nice. Shuddy. 
you're doing great work over there. And Chris right just letting me email him at all hours of the day, seven days a week already. Jesus Christ. Christ. I did say to him, I said, please tell Fuck. me the days that you're off because we need to set up some boundaries for your sanity. <laughs> like, <laughs> And I kept asking him things and he kept, cause Hey, sure. No problem. Like I'm like, no, you need to say no to me at some, like the sooner you say no to me, the sooner I'll stop asking you hey, stupid um, things constantly. Do you know who, do you have a contact at Balenciaga? I know they just cut ties with Kanye, so maybe they got some room for us. We've got a ways to go, but I will drop this news right now. Mr. Alex Wilson is working on a new design for us as we speak. Nice. nice. Love that guy. Yep. Um, if anybody I've wants seen. to watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash mad scientist party hour. You can also follow us all on Instagram. I'm at Kevin Kraft. At Shuddy Boy. Uh, follow the Outkick Bets podcast, for God's sakes. I need to get more listeners over there. Give me my fucking sports betting advice, yep. which is doing pretty good. Well, is it? Because the one article <laughs> I read and listened to, I lost money on. So. <laughs> You got to bet them all, all right? <laughs> and for the record, it was the 76ers who were garbage, so I shouldn't have, you know, I knew what I was getting into. Yeah. Well, I guess I didn't. But uh, go birds and go fills. Yep. And follow Seek at the Venom Vlog, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I said it earlier, so I didn't know if I should <laughs> go again. But no, yeah. you're good. You're good. Cool, thanks. And at MSPH Podcast. And uh, that's it, friends. We'll catch some of you in Patreon land. But until next time, you're something.